Can I just say that's a little weird to look down at your feet? Hey there, Kazan here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It's a Friday in the middle of August, which means it's time for mid-month book bash started by Doris over at Aldi Books, where you read as much as possible over a four-day weekend. We're gonna be doing that, and it's gonna be an interesting weekend, although not maybe for interstitial footage quite so much because we have a typhoon coming and luckily it's not a big typhoon it's the kind that brings a lot it's like a category one hurricane like it just brings a bunch of rain and is annoying more than anything else that's going to be tomorrow today i actually it's already coming up on 2 p.m but i've already had got my run in i actually walked quite a ways to do some shopping, took the train back because it is too hot. It's still hot. And I got rained on randomly a couple of times. It's just, mm, yep, that's the weekend kind of weekend it's going to be. I have goals. I have a pile of possibilities. I actually have a pile of possibilities of goals. So let's get into it. Before I get into my anti-spread, here is my desk and it looks like it always does, I think. My parlor palm though is pushing out, I don't know if you can see, a second like a new group of leaves you can see the lighter green in here and hopefully those will grow above these and spread out up here that won't be happening in four days parlor palms grow slow but uh, hopefully sooner rather than later maybe next mid-month book bash or whenever i do a vlog next i'll be able to show you what that looks like but we will go to my anti-spread let's start with my pile of possibilities i'm going to talk about these just very quickly and as i read books. I'll give you more information. Devon and Chris plan a wedding. It is a black romance, contemporary romance that is supposed to be lovely and sweet and low angst and yes please. In the event of love is a arc that I received from Kensington. Thank you. Um, FF romance where one of the women has lumberjack lesbian vibes, I think, and there's a tree farm involved, something something. And then I want to get into Women in Translation Month. And also, maybe get some countries that I don't have yet on my chart. If you've seen my mid-year stats video, you've seen how sad that chart is right now. But I've, the Union of Synchronized Swimmers, I think that's Finland. And short, small, like a lot of books in translation are, so that would be good. Book of Explanations is by a Mexican poet, but it's mostly in prose. I think it's supposed to be super interesting. That's from Deep Vellum. And while it's a country I have so far, I do have a Masada mini book, Nakimushi Chiyoko-san, which translates roughly as Cry Baby Chiyoko, and that's an option as well, and that would some uh, manga, so that would read a little bit faster. So this is my pile of possibilities for books. That's the Japanese character for book. I also have a pile of possibilities for my goals, because I don't know what this weekend is going to be like. So hopefully I can check off some of these. I'm not going to be completist about it. 1,000 pages, because that's always my goal. Finish a book by woman in translation. Japanese is just so much more succinct sometimes. Read more or equal number of books from non-romance genres as from romance. It's kind of the mood I'm leaning in right now. Have a lion, because having a nice morning in bed reading, that's always a nice thing, and I think I should do it more. I haven't been doing it lately. This is get my watch later down. I'm sitting at 102 right now, my watch later. It's been a battle, y'all. So hopefully I can, and I'm a little over a month behind. I'm usually a month behind, over a month behind, not good. Would like to work that down and nothing in particular, just under 102 by the end of the weekend and finish three plus books would be another goal. So here's my tracker, Friday, Saturday, sun Sunday. Wow, I messed that up bad. And the two books they have on the go, one is Sex Stuff by Julia Serrano, which is about the sexualization of, like how society, I should say, sexualizes us, especially women, and Everything for Everyone, which is a speculative fiction. I received a review copy of this from Common Notions, thank you. And it's about, it's an oral history looking back at a commune <laughs> that developed in New York City in the 2050s, so. I will get there when I get there, but in the meantime, let's get started. I was going through my sock drawer and I found these. <laughs> I remember I got them from a friend. I have no idea if those are ears or arms 
or what. I think I didn't wear them because they don't go well in shoes. Uh, but yeah, um, may as well use them now. Friday night, in between doing all of my adulting stuff and making dinner and cleaning and like just randomness, I have been reading Everything for Everyone, The Oral History of a New York City Commune, 2052-2072. And I started it, I wasn't too sure. And it's not an oral history in the style of, where is it? Hold, hold on. It's not an oral history in the style of Studs Terkel working or War Day because the interviews aren't edited to look like monologues and we learn somewhat a reason why partway through and it makes sense to me. On the other hand, I rather it when they're edited into monologues. I think it flows a bit better. And while I appreciate the perspective of both authors and it's very obvious who wrote what because they self-inserted themselves as interviewers in the oral histories, um, I like one a lot more than the other. So it's once I realized that and why it's made me think about this a little bit more critically, but overall it's super interesting thinking about how after things get really bad, a commune system could pop up in different places around the world and what it might look like, what liberating Palestine could look like, what it would look like communes in China, just all these interesting, it's kind of wide scope, even though they're mostly talking about New York. So yeah, I'm like 60 something percent through. I'll take it and yeah, another day tomorrow. Typhoon's coming tomorrow. Saturday morning, there's going to be oolong today. There's also bagels. Now this color is very unnatural, but it's tomato parmesan. So we'll see how that is. But I think I'm gonna start with this one, which is supposed to be cheese curry. Japanese folks like pushing the, what's it called, pushing the envelope on flavors, so we'll, we'll see. It's early Saturday afternoon. This morning I went for a run and the sky was unsettling. I don't know if I've seen a sky like that here yet. And I mean, you know, it was the morning before a typhoon. It rained on me a bit during the run and we've had waves of extremely like bands of rain, I guess, are going through right now. The typhoon itself doesn't even have a strength attached to it. It's more of a tropical depression that just barely made it over the line to typhoon, I think, so. Just hanging out, doing my thing. I am DNFing, with absolutely no segue, Sexed Up by Julia Serrano. It's an it's not you, it's me sort of DNF because she's getting really academic looking at sexualization and how to think about it. And there are some things that are really neat and I like the perspective she brings as a transgender woman because she has lived as an adult being perceived as both a man and a woman. Um, and that's, that's valuable insight for a lot of this. At the same time, it's not what's grabbing me right now. It's now I'm, and I haven't learned overly much from it, which isn't exactly a knock against the book. Like for some people, it'll be just the thing. It's just not for me, not for me right now. I, so yeah, I'm definitely going back to everything for everyone, but I need to figure out what my next book's going to be. Some mail just came in, so this is a haul preview. I got the third volume of Wedding Call, and it's the final volume. It's kind of nice to have a manga that wraps up in just three short volumes. I'll take it. Next, we have Story Kurashi na Hibi by Takaki Naoko, which roughly translates as, like, my days living on my own. And I love, I read one of her books, and actually got other ones in this order as well, including Mom Puku Marison Tabi, which is like full, full stomach, literally full stomach marathon travel. And it's because in Japan, there's whole bunches of races that are somehow related to food. Uh, you might get some special local specialty at the end of the race, or it's a race you go to expecting afterward to eat something extremely delicious, etc., etc. I think there's runners who eat to run, and but Takagi is definitely a run to eat <laughs> kind of person so she's after my own heart. I am not having a good time of it y'all. I just spent the last hour trying to figure out my next read and getting nowhere. I originally was like oh women in translation month let's do that and I read some samples of books that have, are on my pile of possibilities. One of them had two allusions to religion in the first two pages. 
not today, no thank you. And the other one, I fell in love with the writing style. Just poetic and interesting and just great. But when I reread the jacket copy, it deals with a bunch of heavy themes in a contemporary setting that I don't have the heart space for right now. So that's out. And it, it was just like that over and over again. Anything I thought I might like didn't care for. And the one book that I'm super interested in, I cannot find a sample to anywhere, which makes me sad. It's a small press book. It's probably why, but still. So I'm taking things as they come. I'm going to go back to everything for everyone. Finish that off because that is working for me so well right now. And I also found a romance that is supposed to be a Beauty and the Beast and Phantom of the Opera retelling. So that's an option. But yeah, everything for everyone. That's my speed right now. So I'm wearing these socks again today. And can I just say that's a little weird to look down at your feet and have faces staring back at you. I. It was cute day one. It's off-putting day two. I think all my updates are going to be from close to the window because it's so dark out. So I ended up trying that romance, the Beauty and the Beast phantom romance for of it, and I didn't last 15 pages because the first POV from the phantom character, that was great. That was the writing style. I'm there. I was intrigued. But as soon as we switched over to the Christine Daae character, which is, it's not, uses different names, but uh, it got all flowery, all purple prose. Oh, and info dumpy on top of it. And it wasn't even good purple prose. It was just adverb purple prose. So, nope, still looking. Mad early on Sunday, so forgive the light, but I think I'm gonna try this tomato unnaturally. <laughs> colored tomato parm bagel now. I forgot to say how the uh, curry was. It was all right. It just tasted like they uh, put a whole bunch of curry powder into the batter and uh, some cheese. It was okay, but tomato parm next. I just finished Everything for Everyone by O'Brien and Abdel Hadi, and I ended up liking it quite a bit. It's an interesting look at a possible future where, yes, everything goes absolutely to shit, but instead of leading to a dystopia, it leads to people forming communes and caring for each other and figuring out new ways to live without capitalism. And it's super interesting. It was neat seeing how something like that could start and kind of reassuring that it wouldn't just be a quick changeover in system. That's pretty impossible. It took decades. There were flashpoints uh, where people basically reclaimed their neighborhoods from the police and ruling class who were doing awful things over the course of, like I said, decades, and just an interesting look at what could perhaps maybe be. And I have so much to think about. It may end up getting its own review at some point. We'll have to see. But that's done. So next I'm moving on to The Book of Explanations by Teddy Lopez Mills, translated from Spanish by Robin Myers, recently out from Deep Vellum, I think in May, and I received a review copy. Thank you. And I haven't, I've just looked at the table of contents. And even that has proven pretty interesting. It's a book of essays. So here's the table of contents and the one that caught my eye, especially was number seven on how guilt begins at 6 p.m. and innocence never does. Like, that is so intriguing. I am so curious. Of course, I want to read them in order, but I'm very much looking forward to getting that far. As far as goals, I'm throwing the pages straight out the window with all my hemming and hawing yesterday and DNFing things and just not getting into stuff. It would take a lot to get up to 2,000 pages, so I'm not going to worry so much about that, but I'm excited to read A Woman in Translation. I'm excited to hopefully get through a couple more books, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Book of Explanations is going strong, but I wanted some fiction, so I went to my shelves and I picked up Kitty and the Silver Bullet by Carrie Vaughn. This is uh, in the Kitty Norville series. I wrote it's book three or four, and Kitty Norville is a radio like DJ. She has her own show talk show called kitty in the midnight hour where people call in and talk about supernatural creatures and this is a world where people know that werewolves and vampires and things exist and things happen and it didn't take me very long i'm only a few pages in to get to a part where it's the radio show and i love how vaughn writes these conversations it's some of the my favorite parts of these books are just people having interesting well thought out deep at times conversations about stuff and like I'm only oh by the way 
used bookstore in Tokyo, um, talking about destiny, <laughs> destiny, and just like, all right, here's what I think, and yeah, so, <sighs> turned out to be the right thing to pick up. Hi, it's Tuesday, as in a day after mid-month book bash afternoon, and if you're wondering where Monday went, so am I just ended up being busy with all kinds of adulting and I got edits back on my translation that I had to go through and that was kind of a whole ordeal stuff going yeah it was a day and I didn't read a single page so maybe it's fitting that there weren't any video clips but yeah I'm, I'm here and it was an okay mid-month book bash I think I'm very proud that I was able to go through a bunch of things until I found stuff that was working for me and I'm very excited to get back to Book of Explanations and the Kitty. It's actually right there. Kitty Normal book. Because I know they fit my mood right now. It's just having getting through all of the adulting stuff to finally be able to do that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to talk about anything at all that you may have seen or not seen or whatever, just say hi. Hi. Um, and I'm rambling now. So thank you for watching. <laughs> Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.